just one minute. Okay, so today's uh, topic is uh, DC motor control and it's, it's not a purely DC motor, it's actually DC motor connected with a link. Uh, basically, it's a joint motion control which we will be talking about and assumption is the joint is controlled by a DC motor. Okay? So, that is why I call it as a DC motor control. So, this announcement uh, for today's lecture, it is already uploaded today morning and uh, today the following students will come in front of camera to show assignment 5 or ask questions or answer my questions. Okay. So, you decide which one you would like to do. So, these following 6 students. Okay. So, please read the names and at the end they will be in the front bench. So, looking at the review of last lecture which uh, originally planned on August 31st, but because of link failure we could not have it. So, finally, it was happened in September 1st. Meaning of feedback was explained okay? and a control law was defined for the block control. Know, and this control law which was done with respect to the simple problem of block was actually a PD control law and PD means proportional and derivative control. Then uh, I have introduced the transfer function okay, uh, which is very common in control theory. People use transfer function and just to remind you transfer function was used to convert differential equations to a set of algebraic equations. Then feedback using transfer function was shown for the same block problem and today we will see with respect to the joint motion control. And uh, a couple of simple examples were solved to clear the concept of feedback control. So, looking at uh, today's outline, uh, we will have a motor model, a DC motor model. Okay. Uh, in DC motor, we know that once the currents flow through the armature and the armature is placed within a magnetic field, then uh, the armature starts rotating. No? So, how that electrical relationship can be written? So, that will be the first the motor model. Then the link model that will be basically a rotational equation of motion. Then for the transfer function of a highly geared motor, we will see that how a simple model can be obtained for highly geared one. And with respect to that simple model of highly geared motor, we will discuss the following three uh, control laws. Proportional control law and then we will add derivative with proportional to make it proportional derivative control law. Then we will add integral to the above PD control to obtain a PID control law. Now, these three laws are very popular in control theories. They are not only useful for robot control, but any control be it a process control, be it a CNC machine control, now you just name it. Not only in mechanical domain, of course, origin is electrical domain, but it has application in chemical, computer science, civil, everywhere. Finally, the summary. So, looking at the motor model, now uh, DC motor can be thought of as a device in which the torque is proportional to the armature current. Okay. So, the torque at the motor tau m is proportional to current at the armature which is I a and then this proportionality constant k m comes into picture. So, tau m is equal to k m into I a. K m is a property of the motor depending on its winding and number of turns. I mean cross section of the winding wire, etcetera. 
and km is called the motor constant. If you buy a commercial motor in their brochure or in their catalog, you will get the motor constant. Okay. Now, any motor when it is working, it generates a back EMF okay. because you remember that if a current is passing through the armature and that is in the magnetic field, it is creating the rotation. So, but then when something is rotating and current is flowing, the reverse process happens after some voltage is developed. Let me show you this diagram. So, a motor can be represented like uh, this circuit, we call it armature circuit. So, you have a voltage across the poles, uh, sorry voltage across the armature. Just to show you the physical thing, I mean I do not know whether you remember, let me show you the physical uh, construction or the principle that was our motor and this one lecture 4 and that would be a DC motor. Okay, so, we can see the DC motor here. So, DC motor, yeah. So, this is uh, this is the DC motor. So, when I say voltage VA, this is the voltage is applied here. So, this plus minus. So, this is voltage A. So, through commutator, this is the armature through which current is passing and this is the magnetic field sigma. So, you can have permanent magnets placed and because of current flowing in the magnetic field, the current uh, will be generating certain torque and that torque will create that rotation. But while it is rotating, so this is those constructions just to remind you, this is another constructions. Okay. So, this is your the armature rotor and these are the magnets. Okay. So, when this when this rotation is happening, it will create a voltage like a generator. We have a generator that means rotor is rotating and voltage is created across the stator. So, when this is rotating, it is also acting as some kind of generator that creates a voltage, that voltage we call it a back EMF. Okay. So, that was the concept of back EMF. That means, reverse electromotive force. So, now we go to our presentation here. So, this is this uh, voltage at the armature. Now, armature is consisting of a uh, wire wound. So, this has certain resistance, it will have certain inductance and then this is the motor which is creating the torque. So, K E theta m. So, while the rotor is rotating, it will create a, uh, a voltage here. So, that is shown as K E theta m dot back EMF, this is called back EMF this is proportional to the rotational speed and K E is again another constant corresponding to the motor constructions. We call it back EMF coefficient here and then this is the. So, this is like our you know, R L circuit you know, resistance inductance circuit in mechanical engineering. This I am showing you in advance. So, this is your motor which has an inductance here, this is supported over some bearings. So, bearing will have some frictions and because of the current flowing, because of the current flowing you will have a torque at the motor, this is connected with some pinion and the gears and that will have a reduction of eta. And then the torque we get it here is called the tau L, the torque load and then this is my link 
or the load we call it. So, this is the inertia of the link or load and that is rotating at theta L that means rotation of the load. Again some set of bearings are there which will cause certain frictions which we call the damping coefficient B L. So, the first part is the DC motor model tau m is k m i a back m f is b v b is k e theta m dot. Then using the Kirchhoff's law we can write the circuit governing equations as follows. So, the total current flowing in the circuit you know, in a loop should be 0. So, from there we get inductance of the armature, then the time rate of change of the current plus resistance of the armature, current of the armature is equal to the applied voltage V A minus the this V B which is the back EMF. So, using the Kirchhoff's law, we can uh, write down this armature circuit equation and this we call the DC motor model. Now, for the equation of motor for the shaft rotation, no, this is the one I wanted to show. So, inertia of the motor here and when I say motor, I consider inertia of this motor as well as the inertia of this gear. So, this I combine together the inertia of the motor assembly into theta m double dot should be so, rotational equation of motion inertia into acceleration plus damping into velocity is equal to the torque motor minus the load because the torque motor is here and torque load is here. The difference between this torque will be causing the motion here in the motor. So, I m theta m double dot plus B m theta m dot equal to tau m minus tau L over eta. Now, tau m we know from our previous slide tau m is k m i a. So, we put k m i a and this is T L by eta. Now, because of gearbox we have this relation tau L is equal to eta tau m. Eta is greater than 1 remember and theta L dot that means the load will be theta m dot over eta. Okay. So, now if you combine this expression that means e tau l is the load. So, I put tau l this is our rotational equation of Euler's motions. So, I put this value here. So, instead of tau l let me put color here. So, this tau l I put it here as so this thing and then I brought it in the left hand side and this is the equation I get and so from the motor side that means if you look the equation of motion of motor driving the link through a gearbox in terms of in terms of motor motion this is the equation of motion and these portions we call it effective inertia and this we call it effective damping. Okay. Now, if you write the same equation in terms of the link rotation which I call it the load acceleration and this is the load velocity then this portion is called the effective inertia and then this portion is called the effective damping. Okay. So, now in my last class or even the first class of my control I have mentioned that if you have a gearbox then the effect of load inertia is negligible that is very clear here. Now, suppose for robotic application this eta that means this gear ratio varies from 20 to 200. So, this gear ratio is 20 to 200 right. 
Now, if this is very large like 20 to 200, so eta square will be 400. So, now this term will be the dominating term because because of this eta square, this square term will be much larger than I L. So, this I L, so we can neglect in many times. So, ultimately it will be the motor inertia. So, even though the link will be rotating because of the rotation its configurations will change because of the configuration inertia will change, but because I L will be very small in any configuration compared to this square term. So, many times we neglect okay, and say only the motor term and that reason is the purpose of treating an industrial robot as an independent joint control. Okay. Now, to show this effect I have a simple example here. If link inertia, okay. in the meantime let us try to work out these portions otherwise you might be feeling completely bored. Let me uh, do it for you on the paper. is equal to tau m minus tau l by eta. Okay. Now, here I have a motor, here I have a gear box and then here I have link. Okay. So, this is rotating at theta m and then this is rotating at theta l dot and so I am writing that uh, inertia of the motor plus because of this uh, damping here. So, now because of this gear box, so I have a gear box, because of the gear box I know tau l is eta into tau m okay. and then theta l dot is equal to theta m dot over eta. Eta, eta is greater than 1 and very very greater than 1 okay. as I said 20 to 200. Okay. Now, tau load means this is the tau load what is the purpose of tau load is to generate inertia here. So, tau load is equal to I L theta L double dot plus B L theta L dot. So, now I substitute it there I M theta M double dot plus B M theta M dot is equal to tau M minus I put it here. I L theta L double dot plus B L theta L dot over eta. Okay. So, now I do the following thing. So, theta L dot is theta M dot eta and theta L double dot is equal to theta M double dot and eta. So, I substitute these values here is here. So, I m theta m double dot plus B m theta m dot is equal to tau m minus I l theta l double dot is theta m double dot over eta. So, theta m double dot over eta. Let me write it in a big character in the next page. So, I will rewrite. I m theta m double dot plus B m theta m dot is equal to tau m minus I l theta m double dot by eta plus B l 
eta m dot by eta and then this is eta ok. So, now I do first this side this side become I L theta m double dot plus B L theta m dot by eta square ok. So, now I will bring this thing to this side. So, then this will become I m which is this term and then this one plus I L eta square theta m double dot ok. Then plus I will do B m which is this term plus this plus is due to here I have a minus here. So, minus so this term will become B L by eta square theta m dot is equal to tau m. So, basically whatever load expressions I had that means load velocity load acceleration I have converted into equivalent motor rotation and motor accelerations and got the final equation of motion. So, this is equation of motion for a motor for a link driven with a gearbox. Now, because eta is very large, so B L by eta square will be very small. So, this will be insignificant, insignificant for eta very large. So, can be neglected in many in many practical practical robots ok. And from here the concept of independent vet, uh, independent joint control joint control is possible ok. So, even though the link may move in a high speed, but because of this high gear ratio this term and this term are negligible. So, I can think that the effect of my torque motor will be guided by the motor inertia and the motor damping which are constants. So, which are constants ok and that makes this kind of independent joint control possible. And so, even though we have seen in our kinematics that or even in dynamics that the dynamic equation of motion and the inertia matrices vary with time, but they do not create much problem to us because in this geared system we have seen they have very minimum influence on the total motor dynamics which is finally, the system that provides the torque to my uh, joints ok. So, this is with respect to theta m. Now, instead of putting theta m dot as what I have put it that theta m dot by L if you substitute the reverse manner that means, now if I put it in reverse manner alternatively 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 I m theta m double dot plus B m theta m dot tau m minus I l B l double dot plus B l theta l dot by eta. Now, I substitute this as eta theta l double dot 
and this as eta theta l dot. So, now I can write I m uh, eta eta theta l double dot plus b m eta theta l dot is equal to eta tau m minus i l b l double dot minus b l dot theta l dot and the whole thing will be eta. Okay. So, finally, you can write uh, i m eta square i m theta l double dot plus eta square b m theta l dot plus i l b l double dot plus b l theta l dot is equal to eta tau m. Okay. Now, what is eta tau m? This is eta tau m is nothing but tau l. So, now I can write i l plus eta square i m theta l double dot plus b l plus eta square b m. So, this is done, this is done, this is done, this is done is equal to tau l. So, this is just an alternative way of looking at the same equations of motion and then the same logic goes because eta square is very high, eta square i m will be very high compared to compared to i l. Hence, i l can be neglected and the same thing with the damping and then we can consider our motor control as only depending on the motor inertia and the motor damping. Okay. So, this is shown through this exercise here. If the link inertia varies from 2 to 6 kg meter square and the rotor inertia is 0 0.02 kg meter square, the gear ratio is 30 then what is the minimum and maximum effective inertia? We call uh, this term as go to the paper again. So, this term we call it a effective inertia and effective damping. So, this is called effective, effective inertia okay. and this we call it effective damping okay because the effect of load and motor effect of load inertia and motor inertia both, both are combined together and we call it a effective so the question of that example is what is the minimum and maximum effective inertia go to the slide again so i just calculate that minimum was 2 the minimum was 2 here. So, I put minimum is 2 and then this is eta square and uh, I put 3 0 square this is 900 and this is my motor inertia which is given as 0 0.02. So, I calculate my minimum effective inertia is 11 kg meter square and then for the maximum is 6 here. So, I put it 6 here and calculate 15. So, when there is no gearbox, the inertia because of its motion link inertia was varying 2 to 6, which is a 67 percent variation while it was moving, but because of there is a gear, the effect finally, I see only 11 and 15. So, only about 27 percent variation. So, because of the gear box presence, the effect has reduced from 67 percent to 27 percent. If you have used a gear box of higher ratios, so this will further come down. So, that justifies why industrial robot controllers 
neglect the link inertias. So, now we want to talk about in terms of transfer functions okay, because uh, we know that in control theories things are done using transfer function. So, it is important that we know that how the transfer function should be written. Okay. So, here is an attempt to draw the transfer function. So, if you use the Laplace transformations rules, it is available in the any any higher engineering mathematics books. So, DC motor we had if you remember we had this expression. So, we had I L A D I A D T for the Laplace transformation formula this D I a d t can be written as s i then the subscript a and then this function s. Okay. If there is an integral sign it is 1 over s into this function like this, but if it is a differential one it is a s double differential it will be a square. So, we will be able to see it will be l a s i a s r a i a s because r a is a constant term and then v a s so and so forth. Let us look at it. So, as I told you l a s so this is l a s then r a and then this is the common function i a s v a s and then k e that is the differentiation was there theta m dot was there. So, for that s is coming into picture and then this is theta m s. So, d c motor in s domain we call the term s domain when you convert to Laplace transform we say that this is in s domain. So, so we got now motor model in s domain. Okay. For the motor with the gearbox in a similar fashion we have a double derivative. So, I m theta m dot double dot. So, we have I m s square theta m s we had b m theta m dot. So, it is b m s then this theta m s k m i a s minus tau l s over eta. So, now here this i a s we will take from here okay, and we will substitute it and then we will have a relation between theta m s and then v a s. Why we want to have a relation? Because in the motor d c motor voltage is uh, my input okay, and output is the shaft rotation. So, I would like to have a relationship between theta m and v a which will define one transfer function. So, this is a step I will show you this step by hand calculations here. So, these two I have shown you l a s plus r a i a s is equal to v a s minus k e s theta m s. The second one is i m s square plus b m s theta m s k m i a s minus tau l s by eta. So, this I calculate and substitute here. So, this will be V A S minus K E S theta M S over L A S plus R A. So, this is substituted. Okay. So, now I rewrite 
i m square plus b m s i have a theta m here also with a negative sign so i bring it in the other side so it will be plus i have k m i have a k e i have s over l a s plus r a then i have theta m s then right hand side i will have k m v a s over l a s plus r a minus tau l s by eta okay so here i wanted to mention one thing transfer function method is used for linear control theory so transfer function concept concept is useful for linear control okay what does it mean here in this expression so what i will do first i will assume my tau l is 0 so assume 0 okay then i will study these portions then i will assume v a is 0 study the other portions and then if i want to study the complete portions then i will add those two effects okay so first tau l s is 0 then v a s 0 to then combine the above situations ok. So, what does it mean is first I will assume tau l as 0 and I will study the transfer functions let us do that one first now. So, if tau l is 0, then the relationship between theta m s by v a s can be written as i m s square plus b m s into l a s plus r a plus k m k e s over <coughs> so if i bring it here so then what will happen is theta m i am sorry this has to go at the bottom ok so let me rewrite theta m s by v a s it will be k m over l a s plus r a and my this thing will be i m s square plus b m s into l a s plus r a plus k m k e s over l a s plus r a. So, this this and this will cancel out. So, theta m s over v a s will be k m over i m s square plus b m s into l a s plus r a plus k m k e k s and as I see from the screen that this is the one which I call is a transfer function between the motor rotation versus motor voltage. Okay. I will show you on the screen now that this is the one which is derived and you will get it from the PDF outline. So, this transfer function, so we have two transfer functions. In the first transfer functions, I am assuming my tau L s is 0. So, I obtain theta m s versus V a s and this is the expressions I have just derived for u ok. Now, if I want to study what is the motor rotation due to the load torque. So, which means 
here here I have assumed tau L s is equal to 0 ok and in the next case I am assuming V a V a s is equal to 0 ok. So, this is equal to 0. If you do that then you get the this transfer function and I am sure you should be able to do it on your own and this will be your homework which you can check yourself whether it is shown correctly or not. Now, the question is uh, this expression is very complex and if you look at it, it becomes s multiplied by s and another s. Okay. Now, this s comes from the derivative of the the parameter. So, we have here a third derivative 3 s means they will be multiplied forming s cube. This kind of system we call it a third order system and it is very complex to study third order system. Okay. So, we would like to simplify it and we would like to see if some of the terms can be neglected or not based on the system properties. Okay. So, that is the next step I am trying to do. What I am trying to do is I am dividing, I will be dividing by R A. So, this I will be dividing by R A here okay. and then similarly I will be dividing by R A, this will become of course 1 so and so forth. When I divide, so this L A by R A which is known as electric time constant that is my next slide. The electrical time constant is called L A by R A. Okay. Time constant will tell you that how fast a system can respond. Electrical time constant is very small compared to mechanical time constant which is given as I m by B m. Please notice because of the font this L, this is L, this is L and this is I. Okay. This is I, these two look same, no? please be careful, this is I inertia versus damping, this is inductance versus resistance. Now, since electrical time constants are very small compared to the mechanical time constant, so I will delete the term L A by R A, which means, let me clear it up. So, when I have divided by R A, so when I am dividing it by R A and since this is negligible compared to the mechanical time constant, so this term vanishes. So, I leave with and this will become 1, so this will become 1, so this will be effectively become S into I m S plus uh, B m plus K e over R a into K m. So, this is the term I finally get that K m by R a s into I s plus B and where the meaning of I e is I m and meaning of B is B m plus K e into K m R a. So, at the end if you look carefully this equation which we got the transfer function which we got is looking like our block control, okay, very similar to our block control. So, a very complex DC motor controlling a link with a gearbox, I could simplify in the form of a block control. Okay. And since I have S into S these two multiplication and this is obviously a second order control systems and whatever knowledge I have learnt with respect to block control, now I can apply to this joint motion control. And the next one is corresponding to another 
transfer function when V A is equal to 0 and if I want to have a combined effect of the system. So, first I will study the behavior of this part and then I will study the behavior of this part and because transfer function concept is used for linear control, the effect of these two can be added algebraically which we call the superposition property. Okay. This is last line basically shows how from transfer function you can convert into the time domain to show that how the final equation of motion of a motor model is which is given by this equation of motion okay, where meaning of i is shown here and meaning of b is shown there and u a. So, the equation of motion in time domain for motor controlling a link with a gearbox is given by i theta double dot plus b theta dot is u a minus tau d. This tau d we when we talk about a control we sometime treat this as a disturbance control okay, which means disturbance means load is rotating okay, and because of load rotation I still be able to stabilize my system. Okay. So, this equations in this slide shows this is a natural behavior of this combined model. Here one point I wanted to share with you when we had a one block we have seen the how equations of motion is derived. Here you are seeing motor as a system how the equation of motion is derived. You have seen how a link a rotating how the equation of motion is derived then how they were combined and after combination how the total equation of motion. So, this is the total equation of motion for the system. So, through this process you have also learned that how a several subsystems can be combined to form an overall equation of motion. In this particular case it has only one degree of freedom. So, the final equation of motion is one scalar equation. So, just like a block control now, if I want to control this link, okay, suppose link is not behaving like the way I want, very similar to by block control. So, I want to apply a feedback and in this feedback I start with a simple feedback that let us see it here. So, this is my motor which you have just now seen the motor transfer function is 1 over s into i s plus b. Now, motor is not behaving correctly. So, I put a controller here. So, whatever theta d minus theta which is the error coming it should be multiplying with a k p that means, this will be my torque okay. that torque will be going to the motor and that motor will be rotating to giving the output. So, here I will have a sensor to measure theta. Now, for this thing what is the transfer function? That means, theta and theta d s what is the transfer function? This one I will show you in the paper that how can you derive a transfer function of a feedback. First, uh, in general let me tell you if this is my motor, okay, just say that the whole term is called as G, okay. then I have output say Y, okay. we will substitute these values later, then what comes here? is the difference between say x. Okay. Let us say this is my tau. Okay. So, now what is tau? Tau is x minus y. So, tau is x minus y. Okay. Now, in transfer function terminology, 
the system equations can be written from this block diagram. How? If there is anything here, it should be multiplied with this term. So, g into x minus y is my output. So, it is like an algebraic expressions y is equal to whatever rectangular block I have, whatever input is entering here, so g into x minus y is equal to y. So, from there I write y plus g y is equal to g x. So, from there I write 1 plus g y is equal to g x. So, now if I want to define a transfer function, transfer function is output by input okay. and from there you see this is g over 1 plus g. Okay. So, this is the general story of finding transfer functions for a given transfer function of the motor. So, this is a transfer function, we call it a closed loop transfer function. G is open loop transfer function, which means this G correlates between what you give to the motor and what motor gives. But if there is a some feedback is coming, that means this information has to be fed back, then this will be the closed loop transfer function. Now, in our drawing, we have just seen that we have a controller just before it. So, we have a controller just before it. So, which has a, it is a controller is there. Okay. So, in such situations, let me redraw it for you and show it. So, we have x then tau is going as x minus y and then we have a controller k p is the controller. Then we have g for the system motor and then we have y and then the feedback. In such situation I can think this is a complete one. And for this one, the transfer function can be defined as g k p into g. Okay. So, for such system, if I do a transfer function is y over x. So, I apply the old formula g over 1 plus g, but in this case g is actually this one. So, k p and k p. So, transfer function of a motor controlled by a controller is given by this form. So, now I substitute the values y for me is theta actual by theta desired is equal to k p is k p g g is given by 1 over s into i s plus b plus 1 over k p into s i s plus b. If you simplify this thing, what will happen is as follows. So, you will have k p over s i s plus b plus k p. Okay. And that is the one is shown in my slide that transfer function. That means, this is the output and this is my desired input okay, as we have done in the block diagram case. So, now I will take you to my slide. So, you see this is the same thing I have written k p over s into i s plus b plus k p. And the right hand side is an expression similar to in terms of natural frequency omega n and sigma. This is like damping coefficient. Once we have introduced some notations. So, just to show you the correlation, I am showing you again. Omega n would be k p by i, 
k p is called the proportional gain and this sigma is b over k p i. If you use this kind of control, if you notice that you can choose only k p, k p is in your hand which is called proportional gain. right? Now, having one parameter chosen, you cannot get omega n and sigma at your desire. So, this is the statement I am making, one cannot simultaneously obtain both frequency and damping ratio at will. Okay? So, there is a spelling mistake here. So, just by controlling one k p, you cannot have both damping and natural frequency at your will. So, if we can introduce a different control law, which will allow us to control both the natural frequency and the damping ratio at our will, it will be very nice. So, we choose a different control law now. So, we have now proportional and derivative means I apply let us let me show you. So, let me show you. So, this is instead of proportional I have added a derivative term. Now, these things I am talking in terms of S domain. Now, this controller is actually the same controller for our block diagram control law. Let me show you that part for a while. that was our previous lecture 23 yes yeah so you see this controller which we have used here kp is the proportional part and kv so this portion minus kpx minus kvx dot if you transform into Laplace domain, so it will be k p x s minus k v s x s. Okay? So, that will be actually our p d control. So, what we have used as a control law that was actually a p d control law. So, without mentioning that time, we have used it, but now I am telling that it was a p d was a proportional derivative control law. So, we go back. So, now for this case if you calculate what will be your, so this is the diagram we have used. Now, here I wanted to demonstrate some different phenomena. So, for that matter we have introduced a tau d is a disturbance to the system. So, so far it was uh, no disturbance. So, now a disturbance is added to show you how effectively this control law will work. So, the way I have shown you the transfer function block diagram calculations, if you now introduce k v and do this same calculations, you will see that this is your closed loop transfer function will become in which the sigma will become in this form and such control is very versatile and used in industries very frequently. But here it is not capable of remove steady state error and that steady state error generally caused by unmodeled frictions, backlash etcetera. So, here we have seen for proportional I cannot control both natural frequency and damping. So, I introduce a derivative control which makes it good, but there is something called steady state error which it cannot make it 0. I am not discussing that part you can see in the book, but I will show you in terms of the diagram. So, the just to remind you that what was the steady state error. Here I have shown in the last class that this is a steady state error. Suppose if your desired trajectory is 1 unit, okay, 
if you wanted to give your torque in such a way that you achieve one radian, but after some time you may see that it is not reaching one radian little less than one radian even after some time. So, this is called steady state error and up to this much we call it a transient response. So, up to this much up to this much we call it a transient response that means once you switch on the system it will go like this and then it will continue behaving like this. So, this is a steady state that means after some time when it settles down and that is the reason this is the term called settling time came into picture. So, after settling time whatever the error is there it is called steady state here. Mathematically they can be calculated which we have taken from control theory and in my book it was there. Now, to remove steady state error there is a way that means you introduce an integral gain okay. and meaning of integral gain if you think I have told you derivative gain means anticipating the future error and take action accordingly. Integral error is looking back that what has been accumulated and then try to delete that. So, steady state error is such error accumulated over some time. So, we introduce an integral gain and for which the loop equations will be as follows. So, now this is the controller block k p plus k v s plus k i over s proportional integral and derivative controller. So, the transfer function will look like that and at the bottom this polynomial is shown here. Now, as you see just few minutes ago I have told a third order system concept of third order system which we have simplified due to the negligible electrical time constant, but when you introduce an integral controller then again system becomes a third order okay, as, as this cubic term integral. So, it makes a third order system however, it removes the steady state error completely as you have seen in that plot. Here I have put up a summary of what controller can do what. Okay. For that let us try to uh, recapitulate the other term from the plot I have just now shown. So, if I want to achieve one radian for which I have a controller which checks I want to achieve one, but initially the shaft has not rotated. So, 1 minus 0 multiplied by the gain it will give some torque as the time passes the torque values change and then this theta value changes. And so, first time it crosses my desired theta for example, I call it a rise time. You know. Please remember rise time is the time to rise up to the first desired point, but then it crosses that thing and reaches some high value which we call it overshoot. Whatever I needed it went more than that we call it an overshoot. So, rise time overshoot then after some time it settles down. So, we call it a settling time. Now, k p, k v and k i depending on their values these parameters will be affected. So, that table tells you that with the increase of k p values what will happen. So, if k p value increases rise time will decrease. No? So, let us see it again. If you have certain rise time, 
if you increase kp value in a controller the rise time will decrease which means the slope will be much faster so if kp value increases maybe it will be like this like this okay now what happens So, decrease what happens to overshoot it will increase. So, which means settling time small change steady state error decrease. So, in a way if you look at it the plot may be like this ok. If you change the plot might be something like this. So, it will go like this overshoot will increase. So, it will go settling time may be no change. So, maybe it will do it will do it will do and then it says there might be decrease in steady state error. So, which means it will be in between these two. So, my hand is not going straight. So, with the increase in KP value the behavior of your system from black will become red. So, now if you have kp value increase there will be little change in rise time ok, but overshoot will decrease settling time will decrease and steady state is a change. So, overshoot and decrease overshoot and settling time both will decrease. So, now if I wanted to plot it here. So, overshoot and settling time both will decrease. So, maybe the system will behave something like this maybe it will behave something peak time and settling time uh, maybe something like this thing ok. So, the red becomes a uh, white becomes a, a red there. So, this will become the behavior if you increase the k p value ok k, sorry k v value. Similarly, if you increase the k i value rise time will decrease overshoot will increase settling time will increase and steady state error will completely eliminate. Now, all this some of these effects we can see in a numerical example which I will be showing you next. So, this is taken from the book example 10.7 for an one link arm it is assumed that i and b equal to 1 this is not l this is inertia i. So, this is inertia i is equal to b is equal to 1 and the proportional controller gain is k p equal to 1. Now, using MATLAB the response of the arm is obtained. MATLAB has a toolbox where you can plot uh, if you have provided the transfer function you can define the transfer function in terms of numerator and denominator. For example, this is a transfer function here if you say transfer function there is a command transfer function numerator and denominator and then it will plot its response. So, using MATLAB I have a response is obtained for a step input of theta d. So, which means I wanted my desired input should be 1 and for that the mathematical formula which you will use to plot theta is theta d equal to 1 over s. So, which means if I have a controller to achieve a desired trajectory of 1 radian then for k p value of 1 this is the characteristic. So, that means after about 8 10 seconds ok I will reach my desired value of 1 radian ok. But it is not very visible here there is may be small error is here ok may be very small 0 0.001, but still some error exists. Now, suppose now I want to reduce 
this time no i want to achieve uh, not in 8 uh, 10 seconds i want to reach this in say faster time so now for that what i do is i introduce now a derivative gain to reduce the overshoot so this was my overshoot so overshoot about 1 and this is about 1.2 so about 0.2 overshoot was there and I want to reduce it. So I introduce a derivative gain k v equal to 1. This is corresponding transfer function and if you look at the plot, so you see there is no overshoot. It is going from bottom 0 and directly reaching the 0. So there is no overshoot. So I have achieved it and if you see steady state condition has achieved in 6 seconds earlier it was achieving in 10 seconds ok. So, I have a improvement there also, but then I said ok, let us see what happens if I introduce a integral gain k i equal to 1. So, correspondingly I write the transfer functions and then look at the plot. You see this has done a bad thing now, it has gone my overshooting from 1 with the proportional gain it was up to 1.2 it has gone to 1.5 ok and vibratory motion has come and my settling time has gone too far this is 45 seconds. So, even though after that steady state error become 0, but my transient behavior has become very bad. So, the moral of the story here is you have to find out this kp, kv, ki values very judicious manner so that you do not make the system unstable. Here by introducing ki equal to 1 thinking that I will make my steady state error 0, actually I have made a system unstable before it stabilizes ok. So, this kind of things have to be done by the control designer ok and for that matter this choice of this gains which is also called tuning is a separate research domain itself ok. There are several theories to calculate those things. So, with this I summarize and this will be the end of our control chapter. DC motor model was presented, model of a link with gear was shown transfer function of combined DC motor and link with gear is derived, example was shown, different control aspects were presented and response of a joint controller with respect to proportional, proportional derivative and proportional integral derivative are also shown using a MATLAB program. For your information there are several topics like transfer functions, uh, the block diagram calculations they were basically taken from uh, control theory books. So, if you do not understand from my book, please refer to any uh, control book and one of the control book I can mention which I will write on my paper here, control by RCQO or by Ogata. Okay. So, this I can remember very immediately they are very old books and very simple examples are there. We have our professor from electrical engineering also or by Madan Gopal from IIT Delhi. So, he has also a book no? and if you can catch this book also. So, they have very simple nice examples. So, with this I will uh, thank you, but now I will first wait about 30 seconds for any general questions. Otherwise, those 6 students whose names appeared in the first slide will come in the front bench. So, 30 seconds count starts now. So, if there are general questions, please feel free.
so it appears no questions coming uh, sir yes uh, i have a question on the last part please tell ask me so uh, uh, you have added the uh, qv value for the controller uh, is it in order to minimize the shooting time yes and uh, the ki value uh, the integral value to uh, minimize the Yes. That's true. Only for that part, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So uh, these following students come in the front row. Ato uh, Bethlehem uh, Hailu, please raise your hand. Is she absent? No. No. Okay, next, uh, Arto David Gudeta, please raise your hand. Okay, uh, Arto Demeke Abu Said, please raise your hand. I do not see Arto Demeke. What is he? Can somebody respond whether he is absent? He's not here. Okay, good. Uh, then Atto Desalegan Wagaso. Okay, good. Uh, let me put red for the absence. Then uh, Atto Desalegan Siferau. Raise your hand. Okay. Then Ato Filagat Warku. Raise your hand. Okay, good. Come in the front. You have to come in the front because you have to use the mic. If you don't ask questions, I will ask question. Okay. Now who has a questions? Ato Bethlehem. You have a question? Okay, so I'll ask a question. Other uh, students have uh, a question. Okay, to you. okay, please. Uh, when did uh, resonance happen in the uh, robot control? Uh, please repeat. When did uh, resonance happen in the robot? No, this uh, second word I didn't understand. Where? When did resonance happen in robot? Uh, can you give me the spelling of the word you are using? When did resonance happen in robot? Uh, okay, good. Okay. Uh, when the the natural figuration of the robot is uh, the natural figuration of the robot is uh, the natural figuration of the robot natural frequency of the system will match uh, with the motor frequency the motor is rotating at particular rpm right and this closed loop control okay i have shown you today when in the closed loop control that omega n which is been shown as square root of uh, uh, i'll tell you what it was okay kp over i the natural frequency was kp over i kp is the proportional gain over i is the inertia if this matches with the motor running speed okay this one if it matches with the motor running speed then resonance will happen okay other other question Yes. Uh, I am not clear with the question or how the EMF will be reversed in the case of principle of this motor. How EMF is created? Would be reversed. Reversed. Okay. You see, you know the when current and the magnet. 
this principle is used in electric motor and also in electric generator. If you study about generator, how electricity is produced from a turbine, how it happens? A turbine rotates, right? Look at my hand. So, you have a rotor, a turbine rotates in a magnetic field. Okay, let us be my left fingers are the magnetic fields and this is rotating and once it rotates in a magnetic field, current is generated and that current flows through this and comes to your home. Okay. Motor on the other hand, current is passed through the armature in a magnetic field, then rotation starts. Okay. So, motor principle is exactly the opposite of generator principle. In this case, I am passing through the current, so it rotates, but as it rotates, it immediately becomes a generator. So, it means it is trying to create some current, means it is creating some voltage, but that voltage is very small compared to the supply voltage I have to create that rotation. So, that is called the back EMF or back voltage and which is to be subtracted from the supply voltage to calculate the effective amount of armature current. Okay. Any other question? No question. Sir. Arto Filagat? What is your question? Yes, sir. Your answer is okay, you answered it. Okay. Okay. And uh, David did not uh, ask any questions, right? Or did he? I can't see from this side. Uh, I have to bend, but still I can't see. Okay. Okay. Now I can see clearly. Thank you. Okay. Shall I ask you a question? Yes. Okay. What is effective inertia? It is the property of Today we have discussed actually, yesterday also and last class we also discussed, no not last class, uh, this class. It is an inertia which is uh, a better efficient. Mm, not correct actually. Right. Okay, uh, who, who wants to answer, anybody wants to answer? Okay, come prepared. Next class, that will be the questions. Eh? Maybe to you or maybe to other students. Eh? Tell your friends. Effective inertia will be asked in the next question. Oh, she wants to answer. Oh, she did not. She did not. Huh? Yes. Okay. 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 When you calculate the moment of inertia, right? At the uh, first, at the kinetic energy part. Yes. Rotational motion. Yes. Specifically at the part, how do you calculate the moment of inertia? Okay. Uh, uh, for most of our examples, they are planar examples. So, they are rotating about a, a plane that means the rotational inertia about the z axis which is perpendicular yeah. to this line. So, for which the formulas are all available in the textbooks of dynamics of machineries textbooks of machine design. 
So, it is there some cases the formulas are all there right. So, you have to calculate from those formulas given in those textbooks ok. For example, if it is a, a, a cylindrical it is a thin rod about uh, the axis passing through the center we know this is m l cube by 12 if it is about an hinge it is m l cube by 3 and these formulas I am telling from the tables where different shapes and different moment of inertia charts are available in a design book and mechanisms book also. If you do not know the names, I can give you one or two books names uh, in design. So, I will write it for you. Uh, what is it? The I Z Z. I Z Z, these formulas are there. Like, for example, as I was telling you, if this is the link and if this is the uh, if this is my axis ok and for regular shape like rectangular piece no, the design by uh, Norton design by Shigle. Uh, if you look at these books at the end there will be a table and in this table they will tell if this is the shape i x x i y y these formulas will be appearing there. And these formulas are the, uh, were calculated for all regular shapes, maybe this one and then uh, cross section of circular cross sections. No? So, the formulas appear and they were calculated from the integral formulas. Okay? So, we do not do these calculations, we take the values from the charts. Okay. 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 Thank you. Okay. okay. So, we stop today. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.